the mic is working. to do today so it's good to get warmed up take care of business before business when you got the energy of course Been thinking a lot about things. <sighs> Been in that pursuit of life, like you all, for my whole life. And, uh, When you're in that pursuit, you start to see a few things, start to learn some stuff. Um, one of them, namely, which I want to talk about right now is confidence and uh, power. It comes in many forms. Me having a lot of fixed energy. I need to feel things in order to understand the value, the application, the utility, to understand them. And it takes time for me. It's not trivial. Because practicality to me is value. And uh, not many things have value that can be found on the surface. And I have a compulsion, a desire to understand, curiosity. It's a gift. So back to confidence, when I was young, highly empathic child, traumatized, and I went to school, and I could feel all those eyes on me because I was late, I didn't want to go, and I was crying, my mom was bringing me down the steps. I just remember it was dark and I could hear all the kids. And I could hear them laughing and stuff. So I knew that they were having fun. And they're all surrounding these gurus, these two teachers. Miss Sam, we called her, and Miss Fussy. <laughs> you can probably guess who I got. Any case, they all looked at me because I was crying. And I didn't like that. And uh, the kids dis dispersed and Miss Fussy talked to my mom and I'm standing next to her and I'm just looking at Miss Fussy. She was an older lady hair all permed out, makeup on, looked kind of evil, 
she stared at me out of the corner of her eye <laughs> and I knew she didn't like me. And uh, she was assuring my mom, because my mom was telling her I was a particular type of kid. And she's reaffirming and consoling my mom, everything's okay. And it was. So my mom leaves and I could see the truth of who Miss Fussy was immediately. And you know, she's just a hard nosed old school person. And she probably did have a uh, disliking for me, which took me many years to understand and uh, learn to appreciate. She forced me to overcome a lot of things within myself early. In the process, she gave me a lot of things to overcome. But you know, life is about depth, not breath. So just because you've had a long life doesn't mean you have a deep understanding of yourself, the world around you. And so she would make a example of me for what not to do, how not to be to the other kids. And this made the other kids uh, think they could pick on me. I had fights almost every day, the first kindergarten. Second one, I was a little more relaxed. In any case, I learned early on. That confidence was something I had to earn. And when I saw it in other people, it annoyed me and kind of pissed me off. I didn't understand how they could be confident. And I resented them. And a lot of that kind of stuff, you know. As we go through life, we have to go through those little expressions, experiences, progressions. In any case, going to church, I remember hearing the, the shame and the guilt, the fear, the virtue, the code of ethics externalized. And at school, the indoctrinations, you should feel this way because of this. You should think this way because of this. These processes, these recipes we're teaching you, this is how you make use of this brain. And it isn't I didn't want to learn, I just it was hard to hard to focus on things that I didn't feel value in. Still is that way, but I have gotten better with time because I've learned there is no wasted time. Whatever you learn, you can uh, incorporate into everything else. And maybe a lot of it is mundane nonsense, but it is pattern oriented. And as your focus detaches from the myopic, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, you start to see how it all fits in. And uh, you can begin to appreciate the little things easier. So confidence, I've learned that someone doesn't need to be right to feel confident. And I've also learned that there are levels of understanding which are highly subjective. 
you know, when a kid learns to read, a cereal box is a huge monumental occasion for them. You know, and that's true, that's pure. Maybe when they get older, they discover something and win a Nobel Prize, if that even matters in this world. So, it ain't for me to judge, other than applied introspection through analysis and observation. Because no matter how much I know, there's still a margin of error, a level of understanding you can't have unless you experience it. Have a good night. Mm. What? I didn't notice this before. Oh, wow, I didn't notice that. Wow, it's like scraped. What is that? It's green paint. I'll look for a vehicle. There was no one in the lot next to me when I parked last night. Mm. Or this morning, so I don't know. Hmm. So there is a little interaction with life. <laughs> In any case, I don't remember where I was, but every teaching, every system, every religion, philosophy, they're all bound to simple truths and our understanding, our interpretation abilities, our depth depends on us. So. Hijack the Bluetooth. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. so you can learn from fools and sages alike. Let me fix this thing. All right, come on. This Mercury retrograde is going to be ah, something else. I've got everything transiting my 12th in Libra. So it's going to be interesting. It's funny how uh, the world is picking up as I'm winding down. And that's all happening. What I'm focused on is me. The inner world. Doesn't mean I don't care about people or things or won't handle them as they arise. But I am focused on my consciousness right now. Starting to be called back into intuition from observation. And of course I probably still will Pay attention to the stars. But I've found through studying astrology and other systems that your intuition is all you really need. Because you never make a mistake. 
If you want to be fatalistic, you can, but I think we're fatalistic until we stop seeing ourselves as a static. Then we enact the power of the magician, co-creating with the dynamic. <sighs> I don't know how many I did. <sighs> Another thing, results don't matter because they are found in the present and the present is the pursuit. When you make your pursuit, the thing you're doing now, today, that becomes who you will become tomorrow. And we can't do things by sheer will alone, that's all ego. Must be something you feel. So I'm doing this Saturn conjunct MC thing in Leo right now. And I've been doing the same shit for years. Just now I'm putting a camera on and sharing it with other people because uh, it's time. <laughs> and when it's your time, you know, And I've had a lot of nephews and nieces, and I know the value and the lessons of action and leading, living by example, and uh, not from some pious, right or wrong perspective. But just a free expression of how I am, how you can be. Take it or leave it. Because you will <laughs> anyway, and you should. You know, you should uh, go with what resonates in life. Don't hang on to shit that you don't resonate with or that annoys you. Unless you can see value in the trigger. Otherwise, just wait. Someone else, something else will come along. All right, I'm going to focus there. Fingers are tired. That's a cliffhanger right there. Feels good. You know, this is why people like pain. They like to feel life so that they know what they're doing is significant. You can be right about it, you can be not wrong, but feel wrong about it. But in time, as you change, you start to see how what it was became something else, as you did. And that's why the pursuit is so important. For me, having a lot of Aries energy in the sixth house, when I am working, moving, doing something, creating, that's where I'm at my purest, most authentic, most honest expression. And I have the ability to throw myself into things 
to lose myself in things. But I'm generally selective about that. So, expressing confidence and power. We talked about confidence, now power. The pursuit of power shows you weakness. That's what the lesson's for. And weakness is openness, it's release. The strongest thing you can do, this is why I feel women, the feminine energy is the strongest force in the universe. Because they represent that in the form which we focus on in the dualities of our cultures, at least in this age. And it takes a lot of strength to be at a disadvantage in a world that's a bit twisted. To have to face, to have to be open, vulnerable. And frankly, a lot of men, they can't handle that, which is why they work out like to, there is no negative, but maybe they work out for the fear-based reasons, which I was like that when I was younger, and I'm thankful for that. Help me get that out of my system. But it also leads us into those overt expressions of masculinity, which are for a past age, caveman logic carnal desires. But people learn through whatever modalities they're in. So I'm not going to judge them completely. It's a process that we all go through at some point. And I don't believe in old souls and all that kind of stuff. We're all old souls. We're all enlightened. We just haven't realized it, which is such a blessing. <laughs> I think that's the gift of life, is our ignorance. <sighs> but the tension within us comes to form. and how it comes to form for you is in your pursuit. So don't beat yourself any longer. Get out of the shadows. Take them with you into the light of new days. I guess that's all I wanted to say for today. I'll leave you with my last set here. Well, at least of these. I might have to save something in the tank for today. <sighs> Hanging out by the fingers. All right, see you.